Good afternoon and welcome to another video with a guy and his projects. Today we are working on the B17, which is, as you know, the 2014 Nissan Sentra. Well, B17 includes a couple of years, a series of years. It has 128,000 miles and we are replacing today the inner and outer tie rod ends. Uh, other projects we're also doing tonight is the stabilizer arms because I want to have all this off anyway. Just do it. Save yourself the heartache from later. So I'm going to replace not just the ball joint. I want to replace the whole control arms because the bushings are starting to squeak as well. Um, so you can either replace the bushings and the ball joint or for literally 20 bucks more, just get a whole new control arm and save yourself a lot of time and effort. 128,000 miles, they're still in the stock. Not a big deal. It's a normal wear and tear item. Uh, you shouldn't be surprised when these go out. They should be replaced intermittently. So with that being said, we're gonna get, so actually, I just picked up this Daytona four ton heavy duty jack from Harbor Freight. Uh, I'm not going to do a review right here now, but I am going to use it. If you want to see the review, hit that subscribe button so that you can uh, see the review when I do it. Um, I've also got projects coming up. So I have a bunch of stuff for the town and country, whole new suspension package uh, and steer, a lot of steering package parts as well. So if you want to see any of that, if any of that interests you, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We also have a few projects right here coming up on that excursion. Uh, you know, EGR valve, coolant tank, shifter cable, IAC valve, fuel filter, uh, all kinds of projects going on. So if you want to see those, stay tuned. They'll post shortly. Um, yeah, with that being said, let's get going. We're going to take our brand new Daytona 4-ton jack and we are going to lift the front end of the vehicle up. Get it up, 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 and slide your jack stand under, not under the pinch weld, please. Put it under the actual uh, frame down there. Uh, jack up both sides. We're only going to be working on the driver's side. Uh, I'll film that. The passenger side will be the exact same thing, but I'm going to take you through it. Of course, go ahead and remove your tire. Okay, so as far as checking your tie rods out. This is your outer tie rod. So you have the tire, your rotor, your brakes, your suspension, your uh, coilover essentially, and then you have your knuckle. Uh, down here you have your CV boot, and then this is your outer tie rod on the driver's side. Okay, this is going to be your inner tie rod. Um, and this is your boot that covers that little ball joint, non-serviceable ball joint. Okay, as far as the control arm, this is your control arm. Uh, it's holding up all your everything else. We know this is bad because the rubber is cracking and nasty. Let's see. I hope you can see that. So it's all cracked and nasty, uh, which they will. It's rubber. Um, and it's a normal wear item, but it's all cracked, nasty, and it's kind of squeaking on me. And I hate squeaks when I'm driving, so that's going to get replaced. This is your steering stabilizer. So again, this is not bad. Uh, in fact, I can't barely move it. Part of that's because it's skinny. Uh, it does move as it will. If you put enough force on it, it'll move whether it's bad or good. Uh, but I'm down here. It's super easy to change while I'm down here. And it's only a few dollars, so we're going to change that too. All right, go ahead and grab your 14 millimeter socket, bust off that nut on top of the outer tie rod. You're going to grab your 17 millimeter open end box wrench and break loose the stop nut. Just barely turn it off, tape it off if you're not replacing the inners so that it doesn't move as you uh, go about it so you don't have as much chance of messing up your alignment with the new outer tie rod. Uh, go ahead and pull off your tie rod end. You can either use a pickle fork or one of these super handy dandy tools. I love this tool. It is one of my new favorite tools in the garage. Super, super handy. You saw how easy that was. So this is your inner tie rod trying to hold up your outer tie rod. Obviously it's not working. That does not mean your inner tie rod is bad. It just means it's not as good as it once was. Go ahead and count your turns as you take off the outer tie rod. 
Uh, that way you can remember for next time. 16 millimeter, or sorry, 18 millimeter box wrench and an 18 millimeter socket to break loose the rear control arm bolt. Just go ahead and pop it off. And then you're going to use your 14s again, your box wrench and your socket to break loose the ball joint from the control arm and steering knuckle. Once that's loose, you'll uh, take the nut off and then grab your little hammer and kabing, pop out that bolt. And now here is our pickle fork and we are just going to shove it in. My other tool doesn't quite work in this situation, so shove it in, hammer it out. You're not going to hurt the knuckle uh, and it, we don't care if you hurt the ball joint because we're replacing it. Otherwise, we wouldn't be doing this in the first place. So get aggressive, make it loose, get it off. Now you're going to grab your 22 millimeter socket and you're going to bust that front bolt off of that control arm. So there's only two bolts holding it to the body of the van or car. 19 millimeter box wrench. Just slap it on there. You don't really have to hold it too much. Uh, it'll hold itself. Pop that nut off. Pull out the bolt, and there you go. Now your lower control arm is essentially free uh, after you, you know, finish taking out the bolts. So you can pull it out pretty much straight away from the vehicle. Uh, you'll figure it out as you're in there. You're just gonna kind of pull it and then pop it loose from the knuckle, and voila first part of your job is done. Now if you want to replace just the ball joint, that's up to you. Uh, you might have troubles with these. I think it's actually easier to just replace the whole control arm. But you can see how loose that was. You shouldn't be able to move those with your finger like that. We are going to grab our new uh, Mevotech lower control arm. The uh, part number is on your screen right there. This is a heavy duty. This is way overkill for what we need, but it's cool. It comes with new Zerk fittings, grease fittings, grease nipples, whatever you want to call them. So just size it up to your old one just to make sure it all looks legit. Same size. It would really suck right now to shove it in and find out it was not quite correct. So just line it up, make sure it's good. Now you can struggle like I did and try to force this in in 15 different ways or you can just watch me struggle here and then you can see right about somewhere in here. I found it was easier to pull the knuckle straight out so that I could horizontally push that control arm in and that worked out great. So I started with the front bolt and nut combo. I didn't tighten it, I just got it in there so that it would stay. And as you can see here again, here's another issue I had. Very hard to do one handed or with one person. So learn from my mistakes, watch what I'm doing, and you'll see here in just a minute when I figured it out uh, after I tried 15 times. Uh, I had to pull the knuckle and hold the knuckle out so I could hold the uh, control arm perfectly still horizontally before I let it go. Again, stick your nut on there. You don't have to torque it down right now. Just get it there so nothing falls back out. You want to get everything lined up first. As far as putting the ball joint back into the knuckle, Easiest way is to get it lined up, get it visually looking so that the uh, ball joint will slide straight in. And then, of course, you're going to mess it up about 40 times because, you know, anytime you're working on a vehicle, it's got to be somewhat frustrating. Once you get it there, though, just wiggle, 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 and it should slide right in just like butter. <laughs> got to love it. Okay, so you're not going to get it all the way in most likely, so after you have it started, uh, and I mean like in at least a quarter to half an inch, grab your floor jack, scissor jack, or some, some sort, and just push it up the rest of the way until you can slide your bolt through, just like so. Again, put your nut on, and uh, yeah, you're already done with the hard part. So, screw that on. I'm not going to give you torque specs because I've been getting in trouble for saying torque specs and then people use my torque specs for different years and different models. And So look up in your factory service manual what your year, your manual, your sub-model, your model calls for. Okay, so now up here you're going to grab your socket and pull off the stabilizer bar. Boop, super easy, just like that. Grab your wrench, again super easy. This one was a little bit harder. There's not really any room for leverage. If I was to do this job on this car again, I would do the uh, take that stabilizer bar off while the lower control arm was off uh, just to save yourself some trouble. 
But this was worn. It wasn't super bad, but it was worn. You should never be able to move these with your finger very easily. All right, now for the boot for the inner tie rod. Find that metal band on the inside, cuss a couple times, and try to stretch it out the best you can. It's hard, I know, uh, but it will work if you force it. Uh, once you get that done, uh, you don't have to do this if you're not replacing the inners. Uh, I'm replacing the inners, so we got to take this bolt off either way. And you're going to take the boot off, and there's your inner tie rod. Here we have a super cool, or what I was hoping would be cool tool. Just bought it. This is my first time using it. This is your inner tie rod removal and install tool. You stick a half inch in, or a half inch socket. Yeah, you stick a half inch ratchet on the back side then you grab one of these little u-clips you slide it over the ball joint uh, it's not really a ball joint but I'm gonna call it a ball joint for lack of a better term right now you slide it over there and you slide your tool in you lock it all in place and then you stick that half inch ratchet on the back side and you just turn it it's like a long hollow extension essentially now I was having troubles with this I don't know if they're all like that but that retaining clip on the end of this tool was not staying in for me whatsoever either I don't know how to uh, I don't understand how to use it I got a bad one they make them all that way I don't know all I know is it was super frustrating because it pops off super easy but once you get it locked in there just put your ratchet on the back side give it a quick turn to loosen it lefty loosey and then your uh, tie rod in should be finger tight like that and you just screw it off or turn it off whatever I don't care again mine was not bad I'm just doing it now so I don't have to do it later compare it to your new one and just because you know I wanna show how weak I am I try to move this around this one does not move whatsoever granted it's not worn in yet doesn't mean your old ones bad just means I'm not gonna wait for it to get bad so you're going to screw that in. The uh, install is the exact opposite of the removal. Stick your tool on there and then your half inch ratchet in the back of that tool and you're going to tighten it. Again, I'm not giving torque specs. Look it up in your own owner's manual because, yeah, just look it up. Or your service manual, sorry. And there we go. She's tight. Okay, so next on the list, yeah, see how stiff that is. Okay, so now you're going to put your new boot with your new metal clamp. These things suck, and there is no room down there to get both hand and camera, so you're just not going to be able to really see that portion. But you're going to stick the boot on. You're going to go over to the uh, other side of the vehicle and turn the tire uh, the opposite way to push that tie rod over. Uh, you can also use the steering wheel and then put your new hose clamp on the outside of the boot. Again, I already did the inside, just couldn't video it because there was no room. So, tighten that down nice and tight. This is not the clamp that came with the kit. The clamp that came with the kit just wasn't working out for me. Take your new stop nut, thread it on there, and now we have our new stabilizer bar. Our uh, stabilizer bar end link, whatever you want to call it. There's that. Boom. And again, I used all Moog Mog products except for the control arm, which was a Mog. Again, because I like to see how weak I am, uh, I try to move these around, which they don't because they're not worn in. Again, removals, the exact opposite of install, or installs exact opposite of removal. Just slap it in, thread your nuts on, and tighten down to your make, model, year, submodel, torque specifications, whatever those happen to be. Mm -hmm. Alright, so now we're ready for the outer tie rod. Grab the wrong one first because it's a 50-50% chance, which means you will always grab the wrong one first. And then you grab the correct one. Uh, just line it up, make sure it's the same orientation, same size, same all that good stuff, which it is. The only real difference on this is I think it's a better quality than factory and it has a castle nut with a... Uh, cotter pin rather than 
just a torque spec and hope it stays. Go ahead and thread it on. Mine was 18 turns to remove. It's not going to matter because the inner tie rods were had slightly more threads than the uh, stock ones did. But if you counted them, taking them off, go ahead and count it, pu putting it back on. You're going to move that steering knuckle to where it lines up. And you're going to try not to booger up your threads. Shove this thing on. Do not use over force. Put your castle nut on or your standard nut, whatever you're using. And there's not really a torque spec for these. Uh, you just tighten it until you bottom out on the threads and then back it off to where the hole for the cotter pin lines up. And right about there was bottoming. So now we can put our cotter pin in. If you've never used a cotter pin before, pretty self-explanatory. You just stick it through and then take one side of the pin and bend it around the bolt and then do the same thing with the other side. This just keeps your nut from getting loose because nobody likes loose nuts. Yeah, give it a little tug, make sure it don't move. Take your stopper nut and you're going to tighten that down as well. Again, no torque spec, just tighten it down till it's tight. That's it, guys. Now you're just going to put in your little grease fitting, fill it up with grease, put your tire back on, and hit subscribe. Notice how I hit subscribe. Make sure you guys do that. You'll see more projects coming up on this car and others. I do projects on the cars around the house and uh, try to help you guys learn how to do it. I'm not a mechanic, just a guy that likes to do things. And uh, if you want to save some money yourself, keep an eye on my videos. Until next time, guys, stay safe, stay busy, stay happy. Adios.